tonight. Diplomatic role. Canada and India expel diplomats as police uncover campaign of violence as tensions soar with Sikh separatist murder. Inside the battle. Trump and Harris campaign in crucial swing state Pennsylvania, which is weeks to go until the US presidential election. Merciless strikes. Israel expands its targets in Lebanon, killing at least 21 and injuring dozens. And solar flare. A severe geomagnetic storm causes colorful auroras over the northern California and Alabama. All that and more, as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Ava Derna, World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Vinuth Warnasuriya. A very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight, where we bring you the latest across the world for this Tuesday. And we begin today with some diplomatic updates in India and Canada. Canada and India's diplomatic tensions have boiled after the two countries expelled each other's heads off mission. The two countries made this decision regarding their top diplomatic envoys after authorities accused agents of the Indian government of involvement in homicides, extortion and violent acts on Canadian soil. Canadian police on Monday said that Indian diplomats and consular officials were leveraging their position to engage in clandestine activities, including acts of violence against Sikh separatists in Canada, before the Canadian Foreign Ministry announced the expulsion of six Indian diplomats, including the High Commissioner. Later the same day, India's Foreign Ministry released a statement accusing Canada of being influenced by Sikh separatists and announced six Canadian diplomats, including the acting High Commissioner, had been asked to leave India by October 19th. The row stems from the murder of Sikh separatist leader Hardeep Singh Nijar last year outside a Sikh temple in British Columbia. Russian President Vladimir Putin submitted a bill to the state Duma to ratify Russia's strategic agreement with North Korea. The bill provides for military assistance in case one of the countries is attacked. Russian President Vladimir Putin on Monday submitted a bill to the Russian Parliament's lower house to ratify the Treaty on Comprehensive Strategic Partnership between Moscow and Pyongyang, signed back in June. According to Russia's state-run TASS news agency, the ratification of the treaty was listed on the State Dumas' electronic database. The Comprehensive Strategic Partnership Treaty was signed by Putin and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un on June 19th during Putin's visit to Pyongyang with the goal of deepening partnership and strategic strategic cooperation in a wide range of areas. Most notably, Article 4 of the treaty includes a mutual defense clause that the two allies will provide military and other assistance to each other if one party is attacked. The treaty was met with international condemnation, including from South Korea, which stressed that such a treaty would pose a strategic threat to regional stability. With North Korea holding a Supreme People's Assembly last week, there have been no reports yet on whether North Korean leader Kim Jong-un also ratified the treaty signed with Putin. Meanwhile, Chinese planes and ships surrounded Taiwan amid a large-scale military drill by Beijing in response to recent remarks about independence by Taipei. This image of a map aired on Chinese state media shows six large blocks surrounding Taiwan indicating the locations where the military drills are being held. The Chinese military said Monday that it has organized its Army, Navy, Air Force and Rocket Force troops to conduct the Joint Sword 2024B drills in the Taiwan Strait and north, south and east of the island. Without saying when the exercises would end, it added that the drills will act as a stern warning to the separatist acts of Taiwan independence forces. The latest military drills are widely seen as an apparent protest against Taiwan's President Lai ching tes speech last week, saying that China has no right to represent Taiwan. While emphasizing his determination to defend Taiwan's sovereignty, he said his government is willing to work with Beijing to contribute to international goals. Lai, who took office in May, has been rejecting the Chinese government's claims over the island. China, which claims self-governed Taiwan as part of its territory, last held drills surrounding the island in May. It also held massive military exercises around Taiwan in 2022, after then U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi made a brief visit. The Nepali teenager climber who set the world record as the youngest person to summit the world's 14 highest peaks has returned home a hero, receiving a warm welcome in the streets of Nepal's capital, Kathmandu. 
the Nepali teenage climber who set the world record as the youngest person to summit the world's 14 highest peaks has returned home a hero, receiving a warm welcome in the streets of Nepal's capital, Kathmandu. 18-year-old Nimarinji Sherpa reached the 8,027-meter peak of Tibet's Shisha Pangma mountain last Wednesday to complete the final climb of the 14 mountains with summits that surpass 8,000 meters. The summits conquered by Nima include the world's highest mountain, Mount Everest, and K2, seen as one of the most dangerous peaks. Now, Nima's exceptional achievement was confirmed by the Nepal Mountaineering Association, officially breaking the record of the previous youngest person, Mingma Gyabu David Sherpa, who achieved the feat at age 30, 2019. Well, time for a short commercial break. More world news coming right after this. On the road to the White House tonight, with just over three weeks to go, both Trump and Harris campaigns focuses on a must-win Pennsylvania, where polls show less than a point separating Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. Tonight, 22 days until the election, and Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump are both in the must-win state of Pennsylvania. Our new ABC News Ipsos poll tonight showing the race in a dead heat nationally. Harris 50, Trump 48 among likely voters. But this election will be decided in the key battleground states where the race is also essentially tied. Tonight, signs Harris is closing the gap on the economy as inflation and interest rates are coming down and the stock market hitting another all-time record high today. The Dow up 200 points, closing for the first time above 43,000. Trump tonight outside Philadelphia is turning to the economy. You've been eaten alive with inflation. And all I'm doing is getting you back to even. Harris tonight focused on the economy, too. In western Pennsylvania, making the case that her policies will help middle America and trying to reach out to black voters. Stopping at a black-owned business in Erie today. She's upping her outreach to black men in particular, a key constituency for Harris, and saying this about earning votes from black Americans. Harris also trying to reach out to conservative voters who aren't happy with Trump, now agreeing to sit down with Fox News in Pennsylvania later this week, part of a blitz of interviews. It comes as she's ramping up the pressure on Trump, questioning his age and mental fitness, challenging him to another debate, but Trump repeatedly refusing. Harris releasing her detailed medical records this weekend and asking Trump, who would be the oldest president ever to take the oath of office, why he isn't doing the same. Trump's campaign instead pointing to a three-paragraph letter his personal doctor released nearly a year ago. And tonight saying it's Harris who should pass a test on cognitive stamina. On the campaign trail, Trump this weekend stepping up his anti-immigrant rhetoric and suggesting he might use the military against, quote, radical left lunatics on Election Day. Israel's military law strikes on eastern Lebanon as Hezbollah fought Israeli soldiers after Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed no mercy for the militant group. The premier's pledge came a day after a drone attack by the Iran-backed Lebanese group on an Israeli base that killed four soldiers and left dozens injured. The blast flattened an apartment building and knocked the wind out of survivors. A huge airstrike in Atu in northern Lebanon, the first in this part of the country. It's described as a mostly Christian village far from Hezbollah's stronghold. At least 21 people killed, the target unknown. Further evidence aid agencies say nowhere is safe. It comes after Hezbollah pierced a gap in Israel's sophisticated defence systems. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu visiting the Benjamina military base north of Tel Aviv, where a drone strike killed four teenage soldiers and injured 61. A funeral held for one, as many ask how a drone was able to strike so deep within Israeli territory. Tough questions too about whether Israeli forces have deliberately targeted UN peacekeeping forces in southern Lebanon. In Gaza, another deadly strike following yesterday's at the Al-Aqsa hospital site. At least 10 killed at an aid centre in Jabalia. Ahead of an expected strike on Iran, smart traveller advising against Australians flying to Israel or the occupied Palestinian territories. 
Foreign Minister Penny Wong announcing financial sanctions against five more Iranians for contributing to its missile program. Any hopes of a de-escalation seemingly even further away, Iran's Foreign Minister revealing they've ceased even indirect talks with US officials. The United States is sending an advanced anti-missile system to Israel along with about 100 American troops to help operate it. The move comes ahead of Israel's expected retaliation in Iran. Tonight, for the first time since the start of the war, about 100 U.S. troops are being deployed to Israel as part of an advanced anti-missile defense system. The move a signal from the Biden administration it would help protect Israel following Iran's massive missile barrage just two weeks ago. That deployment comes as the Iranian-backed Hezbollah launched the most attacks Sunday and Monday since the war began, managing to pierce Israel's air defenses in a sophisticated attack on an Israeli army base deep inside Israel. Four soldiers killed, dozens wounded. Israel now in a multi-front war against Iranian proxies, expanding its incursion into southern Lebanon to root out Hezbollah while continuing its assault on Hamas in Gaza. And in northern Gaza, the IDF ordering about 400,000 people to evacuate. The UN calling the situation there dire. It comes as Israel unleashes another aerial assault, this time hitting a tent city near an embattled hospital. In videos circulating online, the blast and what appear to be secondary explosions sparking an inferno. At least three killed, dozens wounded. Meanwhile, in Australia, three people have been rushed to hospital following a chemical explosion near the University of Sydney Sports and Aquatic Centre. A chemical reaction turned emergency response. On the back of a stretcher, a Sydney University staff member with burns to his hand, the result of a nitric acid explosion. The man was carrying two bottles of the substance in this bucket from a nearby science storage room when it combusted around 10 a.m. The university's security block, classrooms and the aquatic centre filled with primary school students were all evacuated. Two contractors working nearby were also transported to RPA hospital after inhaling the toxic fumes. Nitric acid is a highly corrosive chemical used in explosives like TNT and when mixed with other elements can combust and create a dangerous orange vapour. No wonder special hazmat teams spent hours decontaminating the area. Six new accusers have filed lawsuits against the music mogul Sean Diddy Combs, alleging rape, sexual abuse and sexual assault. Rap mogul Sean Diddy Combs faced fresh allegations of sexual abuse on Monday. Six new civil lawsuits were filed by anonymous plaintiffs in New York federal court, including one man who accuses Combs of assaulting him when he was a minor. The man says he was 16 years old when Combs sexually assaulted him at a party at a Hamptons mansion back in 1998. Other lawsuits accuse Combs of decades of abuse, alleging he, quote, molested, raped, assaulted, threatened, and coerced women, men, and minors for sexual gratification, to assert dominance, and to conceal his abhorrent conduct. The Monday filings were from a Houston-based lawyer named Tony Busby, who has said he is representing 120 people who accuse Combs of abuse. His law firm said in a statement that it plans to file additional lawsuits against Combs in the coming weeks. Monday's civil suits were filed a month after Combs was criminally charged with sex trafficking and racketeering, with his trial set for May 5th next year and with a judge denying him bail last week. Combs' lawyer did not immediately respond to a request for comment on Monday. The rapper has denied wrongdoing in other civil cases against him and pleaded not guilty in his criminal case. U.S. space agency NASA launched its Europa Clipper spacecraft from the Kennedy Space Station in Florida on a long mission to Jupiter. There it will investigate the planet's moon Europa for signs of life. The Europa Clipper launched at 12.06 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time from Florida aboard a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket to begin its 2.9 billion kilometer journey. The largest spacecraft NASA has ever built for a mission to an alien planet, the Europa Clipper, is bound for Jupiter's fourth largest moon, where NASA's Galileo mission in the 90s found strong signs of an enormous subsurface ocean that may provide adequate conditions to support life. According to NASA, evidence suggests that a salty ocean 
with more water than all of Earth's oceans combined, lies under Europa's surface layer of ice. The Europa Clipper is set to reach Jupiter's orbit in April 2030 and will fly past Europa 49 times. The mission, if successful, would determine the thickness of Europa's icy shell and its relation to the ocean below, as well as the composition and characteristics of its geology. Well, let's take a short commercial break. More world news coming right after this. Stay tuned. Welcome back. And finally tonight, unusually strong solar storms hitting Earth produce stunning skies full of pinks, purples, greens and blues further south. It looked like someone brushed a pack of neon highlighters across nature's ceiling. A tie-dye sky draped across much of the country. Wisconsin, New Jersey, the U.S. Capitol. In Indiana, it was as if Earth's atmosphere decorated for Christmas early. The Aurora Borealis is a show with admission typically reserved for colder climates like Alaska or Iceland. But last night, this northern light was a southern sight. It stretched to Texas, Alabama, Florida. The reason for such a heavenly display, an unusually mighty solar storm created by a huge burst of energy known as a coronal mass ejection. Experts warned all that energy could have disrupted power or communications down here on Earth, but all it seemed to do was power our wonder. And odds are good many across the country will see it again soon. A rare kind of storm lighting up the sky in the best way possible. And that brings us to the end of today's bulletin. We will see you again tomorrow with the latest happenings across the globe. Well, stay tuned as we've got Sanavi Budan Naga joining you next with the nightly business report. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.